So again, this is our tool room. Um, so the guys are kind of doing preventive maintenance or any repairs to these tools. They may have to polish the tool. Um, they may want to clean the party lines. Right, you see the thing he has in his hand right there? That's a dry ice cleaning. We buy about 330 pounds of dry ice a week. And then we can use that dry ice to blast the surface of the mold. That keeps the mold clean, removes any gas buildup, any um, extra plastic that shouldn't be there. So over here we have smaller machines, so the parts are going to be smaller. But I can show you this uh, robot that we use, which is kind of nice. So this job pretty much runs five days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, and we used to have an operator that would stand here every day, pick those parts up, and place them in that tote. Okay? But we were able to invest in this robot and this conveyor. All said and done, you probably got $60,000 worth of automation right here. But what's happening is as the parts come down that conveyor, the camera is taking a picture of where those parts are. So now the robot knows exactly where that location is. And then the robot is going to pick up that part, place it in that tote. But that robot is also communicating with this uh, slip sheet system over here. So once that layer of the tote is complete, it's, it's going to tell this um, slip sheet conveyor to pick up a piece of cardboard, place it in there, and then it can start the second layer, the third layer, the fourth layer, until that entire tote is full. Once that tote is full, again, the robot will send a signal, and then the conveyor will index this way and then the uh, tote will just roll down here. So we used to have an operator here 24 hours a day, five days a week, but with this automation, we don't have to do that anymore. All we have to do is come by and restock the station um, every couple of hours. Plus our employees are gonna 100% inspect the top layer of every tote to make sure that there wasn't any quality problems. Now, as you'll see, all of our employees are usually wearing some type of mask um, obviously because of the COVID situation. Wherever we can be six feet apart though, if an employee is by their workstation by themselves, they don't have to wear that mask. Um, you probably noticed the mask that I'm wearing. This is a new product that we just developed. Um, it's not really for COVID. However, it could be used in COVID applications, but it's more for the hearing impaired industry where people are able to read their lips. Uh, this is an example of the plastic resin. Um, in this particular case, this is regrind, where we have made some bad parts and we were able to grind that up and reuse it. When we normally buy the resin, and I'll try to show you some, it's in little tiny pellets. Uh, but in this case, we ground it up ourselves and are going to reuse this back in at about 10%. Um, the automotive industry typically doesn't want more than 10% regrind going into their product. So this is an example of the resin that we buy. So it's a little tiny pellet like this. So again, this is for that clear lens. And again, we're gonna melt it in that injection molding machine and then inject it into the mold. So this is a new work cell for us. Um, it's called a sputtering machine where we're actually gonna take aluminum and deposit that aluminum onto the surface of the plastic part. That way, when you look at the headlamps and taillights on cars, you're going to see that aluminum reflective surface. Almost looks like chrome, but it's not. It's aluminum that is deposited onto the plastic parts. So this is what the part looked like when we molded it over there on the injection molding machine. After we put it into the metalizer, we will deposit that aluminum onto the plastic surface of the part, and it'll look like, like this. Now over here, we have kind of a mask building operation. We started building these masks when the whole COVID thing came out. You know, we have a different division, Scientific Lighting Products in Sullivan, Missouri. It's able to buy a flat sheet and then uh, cut it on their laser cutter. So then we cut it into a specific shape. And then we use foam and these rubber bands to create a face shield that the medical industry can use, okay? So um, in the very beginning, we were donating this to you know, all the um, first responders because there was such a shortage on PPE. So I think we donated over 12,000 face shields to the medical industry to help do our part. So this is kind of a neat story. If you look at this machine right here, um, this was the very first press that um, was purchased and started producing parts back in the 40s, okay? Um, so this is the machine, one of the machines that started Kohler Craft Plastics. And so they kind of like to keep this machine here to kind of show us where we started. And then we're going to go through these curtains right here. 
Okay, so this is our finished goods warehouse. Um, we have five dock doors here for the product that's going out. So as I said earlier, everything comes in on the receiving dock, goes through the manufacturing process, and ends up here. But we have about 14 to 15 operators on first shift, second shift, and third shift. But then there's a lot of support personnel you need, whether it's the material handlers, the fork truck drivers, the lead operators, the supervisors, the setup crew, that are the people that take the molds in and out of the presses. So there's a lot more that goes on than just the operator running the machine. So our, our operators are making um, $15 an hour, which is a pretty good wage for an entry level position. But after you get through that entry level position, you have the opportunity to make more money, whether it's because you're driving the fork truck or whether you're working in that setup department or you know, if you're skilled, you can move into our maintenance department. If you have other skills, you can move into our tooling department. So there really is an opportunity to make quite a bit more money. Um, you know, some of those people, you know, the entry level position at 15, but then some people are making, you know, $22 an hour up to, you know, in the mid 30s um, per hour. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities to get your foot in the door at the entry level position. And as you learn more skills, then you can move up into these higher level positions and make more money.